Now we're ready to begin our financial statement analysis, and sometimes that's called ratio analysis. So why do we do this? Why are our ratios useful? Well, what happens is sometimes we are comparing a big company to a small company, or um, we're comparing this year's numbers to last year's numbers, and then we need a way to make those comparisons. And so not only do ratios let us make those comparisons over time or across companies, when we, when we do that, when we go through the process, we can identify what the strengths and weaknesses are of that particular company that we're most interested in. So what their strengths and weaknesses are relative to their peers, relative to the industry, and over time. So when we do these various types of analyses that I've been talking about, um, it's very important, or hopefully I'm making it clear, that these comparisons are really what the analysis is about. And so one type is industry analysis, where we're comparing the, this company to their industry as a whole, or on average. Um, another type is a peer or a benchmark analysis, so typically what we'll do there is pick one or two of, of a company's closest competitors and put the, these two companies or three companies head to head and see how the company that you're most interested in compares to those peers. And then thirdly, we'll do a trend analysis. So that's the time series. We're looking to see um, how is this company doing right now compared to last week, last month, last year. Typically, we're most interested in a, in a year's time. So what we'll do is we'll take these ratios and divide them into five major categories. And so what I want you to be thinking about as we go through each category is the main question that that category of ratios helps us to answer. So the first category is liquidity. And what we're trying to figure out there is does the company have enough cash to pay their bills on time or when they come due? Second is asset management. Do they have the right amount of assets for, versus their sales? So you, know, you don't want them to have too much equipment that where it's just sitting around being idle. Um, but at the same time, you don't want them to have too little where they're missing out on sales. Third category is debt management. How much debt do they have relative to equity? Is it too much um, or is it not enough? Fourth is profitability. This is probably the, the, at least a few of these are the set of ratios that we think of most often when we think about analyzing a company. We want to know, are they making money? So are their sales greater than their cost? That's, it's really just that, ex, that simple. Revenues minus expenses are equal to net income. We know that from the income statement. So with profitability, we have a number of ratios to help us see um, if they're profitable, how profitable they are, and narrowing in on certain areas that drive profitability. And then our fifth category is market value. So now we're looking at the investing public and trying to figure out what they think about the company based on what the, those investors are doing with the stock price. So we're following this same company. Remember, we had 2013 and 2014 numbers. Now we've got some estimated numbers for 2015. So what we'll do is we'll walk through each of these five categories. So first, we're in liquidity, and we're looking at the current and the quick ratios. So the easy part here is just plugging in the numbers. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the numbers. You've got a set of formulas. You've got a set of financial statements. So it's just a matter of finding the right number and putting it in the right spot. What's not as easy is interpreting your results. So we've got a current ratio of 2.34 and a quick ratio of 0.84. On that current ratio, because it's assets over liabilities, you want it to be at least greater than one so you know that their assets exceed their liabilities. With the quick ratio, it's not necessarily the case because we're taking out inventory. Why do we take out inventory? Because sometimes inventory can't be liquidated very, very quickly in the event that we need to pay a bill. 
And so a lot of times creditors don't want to look at the current ratio, they want to look at the quick ratio because that gives a better sense of the highly liquid assets that the firm has on hand. So based on liquidity, when we look at 2015, 14, 13 and the industry, they're doing pretty well now, um, but not quite as well as the industry, but they're certainly trending better. So now let's look at um, asset management. First is inventory turnover. So how many times do they turn over their inventory, meaning they sell everything off? Four times a year. That's actually trending down, so that's not good. We want all of these turnover numbers to be as high as possible, and it's very low compared to the industry, and pretty much always has in these last three years. So below industry average, they've got some problems going on. Maybe they've, they've picked up some old inventory or they're not managing it very well. Um, and there's, the horizon doesn't look good in that respect either. Um, other assets, let's look at how they're managing accounts receivable. So the day sales outstanding, DSO, tells, tells us how many days on average it takes for them to collect on their accounts receivable. So we're finding that it's taking them 45.6 days. That's not that good either because remember their credit terms are net 30. So they're telling people to pay them in 30 days, but they're getting paid 15, almost 16 days late. And it's getting worse. And it's significantly worse than the industry. So they, they, they seem to have a bad credit policy. They're extending credit to the wrong people um, and maybe they're not doing a good job on the collection side either. So now let's look at the, the um, longer term assets, fixed assets and then the total assets. So fixed asset turnover is 8.6 and now if we put them all together, the current and the fixed, their turnover is 2.0. That doesn't tell us anything. We have to compare it to something in order to make a judgment. So over time, that 8.6 is certainly improving, and I think this is the first one that's better than the industry. But the total asset turnover still is trending down, and it's worse than the industry. And because that is encompassing current and fixed, we know it's coming from the current side, probably from accounts receivable and inventory. That's where the problems were. So now let's switch over to debt. On debt, we've got the debt to capital or total assets ratio, um, or I'm sorry, debt to, let's just stick with the term debt to capital, and um, TIE or times interest earned. So their debt to capital ratio is 26.4, TIE is 7. Um, again, hard to say until we can compare it to something. Uh, their debt to capital ratio is going down and compared to the industry they're much lower than the industry and remember this trend makes sense because they took on a lot of debt in 2014 and then they paid it off um, so they compared to their industry they're pretty risk pretty low risk and um, utilize debt much less than their peers and so the times interest earned tells us something about their ability to make their interest payments and so debtor or creditors would want that to be as high as possible and and it looks good it's certainly higher than 14 and even 2013 and it's higher than the industry now moving on to profitability operating margin operating income divided by sales profit margin net income divided by sales and basic earning power operating income divided by total assets how do these compare they're all on the upswing um, but they're all except for profit margin a little bit lower than the industry so they're doing better um, Profit margin is really the only one that's looking good. And so let's talk a minute about this um, basic earning power. What that one's doing is it's taking away the impact of taxes and debt so it helps us to compare a little bit better without those kind of distractions. So 
it's on the upswing, but it's still below the industry average. So they've got some problems when it comes to profitability. Now, continuing with profitability, these are some big ones for investors. ROA, ROE, and ROIC, assets, equity, and invested capital. We want these to be as high as possible. Um, so we've got our numbers 7, 13, and 11. Let's look at the trend. ROA is trending up, but still below the industry. ROE is certainly making a comeback still below the industry, and the same for ROIC. So they still have some work to do when it comes to these important um, investor measures. And so overall, we can say that profitability is, is rebounding, but it's still below industry average, still some work to do. So what, is, what impact does debt have? Well, remember, if you increase debt, that means you decrease equity and um, you increase your interest expense, which means you're going to decrease your net income. So increasing debt is going to decrease ROA, but it could go either way on ROE. And uh, we'll have some example problems on that. So here's the problem, though, with ROE, because we, we focus on it quite a bit, but you need to keep in mind that just looking at ROE and looking at the changes in it doesn't necessarily mean that an increase is going to directly translate into an increase in shareholders' wealth because it doesn't take into consideration risk and it doesn't take into consideration the investment levels. And so based on all this, managers can't just look at their ROE and say, yeah, I'm doing my job. Um, they've got to keep risk in mind, so they've got to look at some other performance measures like the EVA that we talked about already. Now let's look at um, some of the market measures, price to earnings and market to book. So price to earnings, again, remember both of these are telling us something about the investor sentiment. So we've got a PE of 12 and a market to book of 1.6. PE is telling us you know, how high is the stock price relative to earnings? If we've got a really high PE, for whatever reason, the market has driven the price up significantly relative to the earnings that the company has produced. And so you kind of get nervous when you've got really high PE ratios because they may drop when investors realize that the earnings are kind of flat or if the earnings continue to be flat. Um, a low P.E. ratio is pretty attractive for some investors looking for a bargain. Market to book, again, is going to be um, measuring that difference between market value and book value. So we want this number to be actually pretty high. So what's happening with P.E.? Um, it's going back up. Now, P.E. is an interesting one because from a manager's perspective, I want a high P.E. because that means my stock price is high. From an investor's perspective, I might want a low P.E. because I can get a bargain. So you've got to keep in mind which perspective you're taking. Um, so P.E. increasing but still below average, market to book the same way. So what is all this telling us? Well, P.E. is telling us how much investors are willing to pay for a dollar of earnings. So going back, maybe not going back, yeah, going back, that means that investors are willing to pay $12 for $1 of earnings. And um, similarly with market to book, it's how much investors are willing to pay for a dollar of book value equity. They're willing to pay a dollar sixty, I believe it was. So for both of these, as I mentioned before, the higher the better from the firm's perspective. Higher the PE, the higher the stock price relative to earnings. Higher the market to book, the higher the, the overall market value of the firm relative to its overall book value. 